Everything you wear in this life, no matter how elegant or nice it may be at first, eventually gets old or worn out. And the Prophet ﷺ in fact likened Iman, he likened faith to a garment and said that you need to care for it in the same way you would care for a garment. He said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, إِنَّ الْإِيمَانَ لَيَخْلَقُ فِي جَوْفِ أَحَدِكُمْ كَمَا يَخْلَقُ الثَّوْبِ فَاسْأَلُوا اللَّهَ أَنْ يُجَدِّدَ الْإِيمَانَ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ That verily faith wears out in your heart the same way that a garment does. Sometimes, especially if you've been Muslim for a long time, faith loses its color and it loses its shine. So ask Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala to revive the faith in your heart. If your Iman was a garment, what would it look like right now? Keep it new, beautiful, and keep it fresh. And let Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala dress you with the result of it on the Day of Judgment and in Paradise. So now as we are going out to eat and drink and feast with the people, what is it that we are wearing in Jannah? The Prophet ﷺ said that Whoever wears silk in this world will not wear it in the hereafter. And he said in another narration, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever wears gold in this world will not wear it in the hereafter. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi of course, is speaking specifically to men. And this is very similar to when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, whoever drinks wine in this world will not drink it in the hereafter. And so you'll notice this connection between abstaining from certain drinks in this life and abstaining from certain garments and adornment in this life so that you could have it in the hereafter instead. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often in the Quran connects the drinks of paradise with the dress of paradise. He says in Surah Al-Insan, وَجَزَاهُمْ بِمَا صَبَرُوا جَنَّةً وَحَرِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward them for their patience with a garden and with silk robes. And then a few verses later, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the virtuous will be dressed in garments of fine green silk and rich brocade and adorned with bracelets of silver. And as we said with these robes and with the clothes of the people of Jannah, you don't have to grab them off of the rack. Instead, you grab them off of the branches of the trees that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided to you. Now, Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah says about this verse in Surah Al-Insan, Aliyahum thiyab, upon the virtuous of them, that it shows that this is an outer garment on top of the garments that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you. So it's like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is further adorning you with robes to demonstrate your rank and your virtue. It's not concealing anything, just like how you add garments for decoration and beauty. And he said, consider how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions both the beauty of the outside of the person with the garments that he adorns them with and the pleasure of the inside of the person with the pure wine and drink that he's giving to them. So you've already bathed in the rivers of Jannah that removed any impurity and imperfection inside out. And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is increasing your pleasure through wine and drink on the inside and adornment on the outside. And if the drinks are precise in Jannah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَدَّرُوهَا تَقْدِيرًا They're in perfect proportion. Imagine how perfectly fitted the tailored clothes of Jannah are. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُحَلَّوْنَ فِيهَا مِنْ أَسَاوِرَ مِنْ ذَهَبٍ وَلُؤْلُؤَا وَلِبَاسُهُمْ فِيهَا حَرِيرٍ And here they will be adorned with golden bracelets and pearls. And there they will have silken garments. Now you have the wine and you have the silk garments and now you have gold bracelets. And these bracelets will not just be gold, but they'll also have exotic pearls on them. And how are the bracelets being made? Now, subhanAllah, we mentioned in the previous episode that you have a bull that is grazing in Jannah, ready to be sacrificed for you. So is there a jeweler in Jannah for you? Ka'bir radiallahu ta'ala anhu said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created an angel who is assigned with the duty of shaping the jewelry of the people of paradise until the day of judgment. So just like your palaces, your food, your drink, your gardens are already in preparation, your jewelry is already being made by an angel in paradise. And he said that if one bangle of the jewelry of the people of paradise was brought out, it would diminish the light of the sun. So imagine if the entire sets of jewelry of the people of paradise were shown to this world. SubhanAllah, people try to stack valleys of gold in this life, and they're never satisfied, even though they know they can't take it with them to the grave. 
But imagine one carat of gold, one pearl from Jannah is better than the entire world and everything that is within it. And the Prophet ﷺ confirmed this in one hadith. He said, if as little as what could be placed on a fingernail of what is in paradise were to become apparent to the people of this world, it would have beautified the entirety of the heavens and the earth. And if a man among the people of paradise were to appear and his bracelets were made apparent, it would blot out the light of the sun. In another narration, one pearl from the dress of a woman of paradise would light up what is between the east and the west. And in one narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, they will have bracelets of gold and silver, garlands of pearl and ruby, and they will have crowns on them like the crowns of kings. But what are these crowns on their heads from? And is there a difference between them? While everyone in Jannah has some sort of a crown, not all crowns are equal. And the greatest crown is the crown of the Qur'an for the Hifaz and for their parents. The Prophet ﷺ said that the parents of the one who memorizes the Qur'an will be dressed with two robes, which could not be valued by anything in this world. And they will say as they are being dressed with this robe, Ya Rabb, O oh our Lord, why are we given this? And it will be said to them, because of your child's learning of the Qur'an. And of course, the Shaheed has a crown that is unlike any other crown. And it's narrated from Al-Miqdad radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that a crown of honor will be placed upon the head of the Shaheed. One ruby of that crown is better than this world and everything that is in it. Now, as for the combs, and why do you need combs if your hair is never disheveled, right? The combs are of gold, and that's merely to add beauty. So every time you comb your hair in Jannah, it merely adds to its beauty, but you're not fixing anything in Jannah. In the same way that we have perfume, even though the Prophet said what? We naturally smell like musk. So this is just to add to your fragrance in Al Jannah. And of course, this is the same thing with the outer garments that we mentioned that don't need to conceal anything, but only further beautify us. Now, before you ask yourself what type of garment you would want in paradise, ask yourself now, what type of a garment are you in this dunya? Do you conceal your brother's faults so that you may be concealed and beautified in paradise? If you're married, are you a garment to your spouse? Hunna libasun lakum wa antum libasun nahun. You are a garment to them and they are a garment to you. Do you clothe yourself out of modesty in this life? Because the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that those who are dressed but in actuality not really wearing anything would not even smell Jannah. Do you clothe your brothers and sisters in need out of gratitude so that Allah as Shakur clothes you in a way that makes you forever grateful in Jannah? And finally, do you adorn yourself with libas with taqwa, the garment of piety, none of which is more beautiful than the Qur'an? Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'innah irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyah فَادْخُلِي فِي عِبَادِي وَادْخُلِي جَنَّتِي